So today we're going to be walking you through the setup of the IXO2. Uh, the IXO2 is the newest launch monitor from Unicor. It's based on the original IXO. Uh, basically the biggest difference is it's going to have a third camera, which allows it to have a larger hitting area. So the setup process is going to include mounting the IXO2 to a crossbar, installing software, and then going through the calibration process. Here's a quick list of everything included in the box when you receive your IXO2. The Ethernet cable to connect your IXO to your PC, an Ethernet to USB dongle in case your computer does not have Wi-Fi, club stickers, the IXO power supply, the calibration card for the IXO2, and the IXO2 launch monitor with included mount. There's instructions in the online manual on mounting the IXO to your ceiling, but if you can't mount your IXO directly to your ceiling, Carl's Place offers a Unicor frame mount kit with hardware to attach your IXO directly to your pro golf enclosure. So for mounting the hardware, we'll refer you over to our original IXO installation video. In this video, we will cover the steps to mounting your Unicor to your enclosure. Start by organizing the mounting kit. The first step is to attach the U-bolts to the crossbar on the enclosure. Start by accessing the crossbar by pulling down the ceiling panel flaps. Insert the U-bolts between the ceiling panel and around the crossbar. To center the spacing for your Unicor base plate, insert the U-bolts between the hex bolts on the crossbar C-fitting. Slide the U-bolt clamps and screw the coupling nuts onto the U-bolts finger tight. Next, install the base plate to make sure the spacing of your U-bolts is correct. Loosen the U-bolts and adjust the spacing as necessary so that you can secure all four screws to the base plate. Once the plate has been mounted and the U-bolt spacing is correct, it's time to cut holes in the ceiling panel flaps. Make sure the U-bolts are tight to the crossbar and remove the base plate. Pull the flap over the U-bolt and cut a small hole in the fabric where each side of the U-bolt meets the flap. Do this with each U-bolt and re-secure the flaps to the hook and loop on each ceiling panel. Next, reattach the Unicor base plate. Make sure that the side with the beveled screw holes faces towards the floor when mounting the plate. Tighten the coupling nuts and follow by tightening down the mount screws all the way. Now it's time to install the angled mounting plate included with your Unicor. Locate the six screw holes in the mounting plate and align them with the base plate screw holes. Use a clamp to help hold the plate in position while securing the screws. Make sure all six screws are secured tight before mounting the Unicor. If you have a Carl's Place Unicor protective case, you'll want to install this next. To install the protective case, place the unattached Unicor inside with the front facing towards the logo. Next, secure the six included Unicor mounting screws 
through the corresponding holes to secure the case to the unicore. Remember that you'll need a gap between the screw head and the unicore case to slide the unicore into position on the mount. Once all the screws are attached, slide the unicore into the mount by threading the mounting screws up and over the slots in the mount. Finish up by tightening all six screws with a few turns each. Your unicore is now mounted and ready to run cable. Uh, so next thing we're gonna do is plug in our power and ethernet cables. Um, you can see on our pro enclosure here, we ran the cables along the frame of the enclosure and we have it covered up just with the sleeve here. Uh, we have it running along to the side of the enclosure and then out the back. And it's really cool because we just kind of concealed all the, the cords right inside the sleeve of the enclosure. So you can't even see them until they come out and plug into the computer. So it's just a simple matter of plugging in your ethernet cable your power cord and hitting the power switch. Now that we have the Unicore all hooked up, it's time to install the software. So before we start our software installation, we're going to plug the um, data cable from the IX02 right into the ethernet port on the back of our computer. Um, there is a dongle included. It's a USB to ethernet dongle. Uh, that you can try using for uh, a wired internet connection. If it doesn't work for you, you might need to get a Wi-Fi adapter uh, for your PC though. After you purchase your Unicore, you'll get an email with a license file attached to it. So go ahead and just open the email, download your license file, and you can start your installation. All right, so we will send you a, a link to the installation guides for your IXO2. Um, it's really important to follow all the steps in here. Just go through step by step to make sure you're not missing anything. After you complete the mounting portion, um, you're going to go through and start installing the software. The first thing you want to do is check out the network guide. Um, this is going to walk you through and make sure that your computer and the Unicore basically are talking to each other properly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to control panel. Click on network and internet, and then click on the network and sharing center. So once you're in the network and sharing center, uh, find the uh, change adapter settings option, which is right here. So in the networks connection window, you'll find your ethernet, right click on that and then click properties. In the Ethernet properties, uh, scroll down until you find the Internet Protocol version 4, TCP slash IPv4. Um, and click on that one time to highlight it, and then click Properties. So once you're in, the, in there, uh, click on Use the following IP address, and type in uh, the address as listed out in the Owner's Guide. So then you click OK. And you can just close out of those windows and your computer and IXO2 should be communicating with each other. So the next step is going to be to download the installer from the link that is provided in the owner's guide. You can just either copy and paste the link that they have there or simply click on that and it will automatically start the download for you. All right, so after the download is complete, um, go check your downloads folder and you'll see the Unicore IX02 setup. Uh, you just want to double click on that to run it and it will start the installation process. We'll click on yes. And then just follow these steps. Um, click next, click install. All right, so during the installation process, you might get a pop-up uh, that looks similar to this. Uh, all you have to do is click OK uh, to get through that. You get another one, just click OK, and the installation will continue. So after the setup is complete, uh, you'll get this window telling you it is complete. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is uncheck this little box here that says Run Unicore IX02, and then you click Finish. So now we're going to go um, on our computer. We're going to navigate to the C drive and then uh, to Unicore and then the device folder 
launch monitor, and then IXO. In here, uh, there's a program called IXO to check. So we will double click on that to run. Yes, we want to allow that to run. And so that's just going to tell us if it detects the IXO. It says the sensor is good, so we are good to go there. So the next step is going to be going back to that same folder we were just in and then double clicking on IXO2 underscore activation. So the next thing you'll do is click on the browse button and you're going to navigate to where you saved your license file. Uh, we put ours just right on our desktop so it's easy to find. You'll double click on the license file and click activate. All right, and there we go. We get a pop-up that says activation success and we can click on OK. Once the sensor has been activated, you might see a screen like this pop up. So on this window, uh, you'll want to click on set network param and firewall. And then after you select that, it'll ask you to restart your PC. So go ahead and click yes and your PC will begin to restart. So next, the installation guide tells us to do the uh, calibration on the IXO2. Uh, it's not necessary to do that at this point. So first, as long as we're at the computer doing installations, uh, we're going to move on and in install the view software. All right, so we're going to scroll down to page 20 of the owner's guide, uh, which is the view software installation portion. Uh, so very first step is click on view installer. And that will start the download. Once your view installer finishes downloading, you're going to want to navigate to the file location on your computer. Uh, we, again, just saved ours right to our desktop. So you, you will find that file, double click, and it will run the installer. Um, so we just click yes on this initial window. You want to leave the destination folder uh, as the C drive C slash view, and then click install. If you get a pop-up like this uh, that says Microsoft Visual C++ on the top, you can just click close. And yes, I'm sure I want to cancel. So next, we'll get this pop-up window for installing MVS. Uh, so we'll start the setup there. So on this screen, you're going to want to make sure that all of those boxes are checked. And then you can click on next. And it will start the installation. All right, so once that installation is done, we'll click on finish. And then uh, again, we're gonna get a window here asking us to verify the installation. Uh, so we will navigate again to where we saved the license file. Uh, we just have ours on the desktop for ease of access. We'll double click on that and click activate. So we have another activation success window. So we will just click on okay there. We can close that. We can close this MVS software and our view setup is complete. Uh, we just have to click finish and we are all set to go. So the next step is gonna be calibration. Uh, we're going to be looking for the IXO2 calibration tool, which you can find on the C drive. Uh, we, to simplify things, just put a shortcut right onto our desktop uh, that we can double click to open up and that will bring up our calibration tool. Um, so what we're going to do is take this checkered board. Um, you can see there's an arrow here that says screen. Uh, so we'll point that towards the screen and we're going to align the top of the board with this red line that you can see right here on the center cam. And then on side cam one and side cam two, we're going to try to get the board uh, so the edges of the board are evenly spaced uh, from the edges of those two cameras. All right, so we're going to come up again, make sure the arrow is aligned towards the screen. And we're going to first look at the center cam where we'll get the top of that board aligned with the red line on the center cam, which is actually on the left hand side. And now we're going to look at side cam one and side cam two. We want to make sure that the board is equal distance from the edges. So we're looking right here and over here. And we want to try to get that lined up equidistant as we can. Let me just a hair more that way. I think that looks pretty good. Just double check to make sure we're still lined up on that red line on the center cam. 
So now that we have everything lined up the way we want, we're going to click on calibration. And you'll see up here the IXO2 is looking through the cameras. We get a calibration success message. So we can hit confirm and then hit confirm down here. And we're ready to go. So we're going to test out just to make sure that everything is set up and working properly. Uh, so we've got the view software started. So let's take a shot and see what happens. So you can see it registered the shot. Everything is working great. So you are ready to start golfing using your IXO2. So that will complete our IXO2 setup. If you have any questions, just let us know in the comments below. We hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure you're smashing that like button. And as always, make sure you subscribe for more content on building your own golf simulator setup.